Good afternoon. Uh, we'll have opening statements by the Secretary General and the Prime Minister, and then we'll have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister Kalas de Kaya, welcome back to NATO. It's great to have you here. Uh, we are only two weeks uh, from the NATO uh, summit in Vilnius, where we'll take far uh, reaching decisions. Uh, to bolster our deterrence and defence and step up our support for Ukraine. The mutiny by Wagner mercenaries uh, at the weekend is uh, an internal matter for Russia. At the same time, it demonstrates once again that President Putin's illegal war in Ukraine is a big strategic mistake. It has deepened existing divisions and created new tensions in Russia. But we should not underestimate Russia. We must continue to support Ukraine, and we must keep our defenses strong. To send a clear message to Moscow and Minsk that NATO will protect every inch of allied territory. Since 2014, we have significantly reinforced our presence and readiness, from the Black Sea to the Baltic Sea, including in Estonia. NATO's multinational battle group uh, in Tapa, led by the United Kingdom, helps to deter any aggression. Just last month, uh, Exercise Spring Storm demonstrated our ability to reinforce our presence uh, in Estonia up to brigade size level. Fighter jets um, and air defenses from allies also help to protect Estonian skies. And allies have agreed a new rotational model for air and missile defense, allowing for swift transition from air policing to air defense. At the summit, we will take the next steps with new regional plans, assigned forces and capabilities, and enhanced exercise program, all backed by over 300,000 troops on high readiness. Support for Ukraine is another top priority for the summit. I welcome Estonia's leading role in providing critical aid and rallying the international community behind the Ukrainian people. We need to step up even more. At the summit, we will agree a multi-year package of assistance and upgrade our political ties with Ukraine. This will bring, bring Ukraine closer to its rightful place in NATO. We also need to invest more in our security. At the summit, I expect we will agree on a more ambitious defense investment pledge with 2% of GDP as the floor, not the ceiling. Here too, Estonia is leading by example, investing more than 2% of GDP in defence. The Vilnius summit uh, will be the first with Finland uh, as a member. And we're working to finalise Sweden's accession as well. Therefore, I have called another meeting of senior officials from Turkey, Sweden and Finland next Thursday. The time is now to welcome Sweden as a full member of NATO. Let me finally uh, mention uh, Kosovo, which was also addressed in our meeting. Our K4 mission continues to fulfill its UN mandate uh, impartially. We call on both parties to refrain from anything that can further escalate tensions and return immediately to the EU-facilitated dialogue, which is the only way forward. So, Prime Minister Kallas, uh, Kaya, once again, welcome to NATO. It's great to have you here, and uh, I appreciate very much your leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, dear Jens, uh, dear Secretary General, dear journalists. Um, as um, you know, we had a very, very good discussion, and I'm, I'm really uh, pleased to be here in NATO headquarters today. Uh, we are living through uh, turbulent times, and I really thank you, Jens, for having a principal stance and building uh, allied unity throughout these difficult uh, times. It is increasingly clear uh, right now that Ukraine is winning this war, uh, with the help of uh, transatlantic family uh, right um, behind it. And it is clear that um, the sooner Putin gets that it's uh, losing this war, the faster Russia will return to Russia. It is our joint responsibility to prove him uh, by our continued support to Ukraine uh, and our unity and decision making. Um, we also discussed uh, preparations for the NATO's uh, Vilnius summit uh, first. Uh, the permanent peace um, in Europe can only be uh, 
possible when we end the grey zones in the security of Europe. Grey zones are a breeding ground for instability and wars. Uh, it is experience of my own country that uh, NATO's membership is the safest, cheapest and the most credible way of deterring Russia. Russia's aggr aggression against Ukraine has also proved this point very clearly. The only thing that can end the cycle of aggressions against its neighbours is NATO membership. Hence, for peace, we need Ukraine in NATO. In Bucharest summit, allies agreed that Ukraine would become a member. Uh, this should not remain a hollow promise. What we need now is to define a practical path uh, to meet this goal. And we need to send a strong message of hope uh, to the Ukrainian soldiers in the trenches that uh, with NATO membership on the horizon, they are fighting their last war with Russia. And second, we made historic decisions in Madrid summit. Uh, these were truly significant changes in the policy and also in the mindset. Now we need to put these decisions in practice. All allies uh, need to continue to invest in security. This will make our transatlantic bond even stronger. Uh, by the time allies convene in Washington to celebrate this, uh, NATO's 75th anniversary next summer, we Europeans must also demonstrate the strategic leap not only in thinking, but also in real deliverables. Uh, for that, the defence of the NATO's European allies needs a truly decisive lift. We need to step up uh, combat effectiveness and we need deterrence credible enough to avoid the war and stop Russia's cycle of aggressions. For that, we need to increase defence investment spendings. Uh, for a credible deterrence and defence, it is key to close existing gaps uh, in our capabilities and also in our stockpiles. Our long-term aim should be 2.5% uh, of GDP. I know from experience how difficult it is for democratically elected leaders to argue for increasing costs on defence. Uh, in Estonia, we are increasing the defence expenditure to 3% of our GDP, and that requires raising taxes. And I can tell you, it's not popular. Um, but uh, time matters, and sending out right signals also matters. Uh, just to give you an example from my own country's history, in 1933, uh, the defence budget uh, increased and uh, lacked political support in Estonia. In 1939, uh, the tenfold boost of defence investments was already too late. None of the equipment made it to the time to defend us in the Second World War and from the occupation that followed. Um, third, Russia has tried to blackmail NATO away from its neighbourhood. The outcome has been the opposite. Finland joined the alliance and I hope Sweden will be joining as well. Uh, so in conclusion, it is a long war uh, that Russia is uh, fighting. It will not be over until Russia accepts and respects Ukraine's statehood. Developments uh, within Russia should not blur our focus and resolve. Aggression must end in defeat. And long-term European security requires uh, Ukrainian membership in NATO. We have to work on the wording how to get there. For peace that lasts, we also need accountability. I know that this is not a, a NATO's topic, but I, I really want to stress this. Uh, we need the accountability for the crime of aggression for Russia's leadership. Without the accountability, Russia's cycle of aggression, uh, Russia's cycle of constantly attacking its neighbours will just uh, continue and will never stop. Thank you. We'll take a few questions, Estonian public broadcaster in the middle. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll ask two questions from both of you. Um, my name is Jotep Berg from Estonian Public Broadcasting. Uh, the first question is, um, if those new uh, regional defense plans make sure that realistically uh, the allied territory is defended in case of conflict from the first meter from day zero until uh, the victory against any enemy, 
And the second question is, if Latvia and Lithuania should be fortified in the light of the presence of Wagner troops in Belarus? Thank you. First of all, we have to understand that NATO already has plans and capabilities in place to defend uh, uh, every uh, ally and every inch of allied territory. And then we are further strengthening our deterrence and defense, uh, partly by the decision we made in, in Madrid, and then uh, the implementation and the follow-up that will happen now in Vilnius. And this is about uh, uh, assigning specific forces to specific territories, and uh, also to increase readiness of our uh, forces. The main purpose uh, of uh, this is uh, actually not to fight the war, but to prevent the war. Mm -hmm. And deterrence has worked for more than 75 years, mm -hmm. uh, or for almost 75 years for, uh, for this alliance, since we were founded in 1949. And, um, and, uh, and therefore, this is partly a question of forward presence. We have increased our presence also in the Baltic region. Uh, but also about uh, uh, high readiness, the ability to quickly reinforce and uh, pre-positioned equipment. And then we have to remember that the, uh, the, the capabilities we can move uh, uh, most quickly is air and naval forces, which is also part of the deterrence in the, in the Baltic region. So uh, yes, we are constantly assessing uh, the, 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 the need for uh, presence of ground troops uh, 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 across the whole alliance, including in the Baltic region. But I think it's extremely uh, important to understand that uh, our ability to defend every inch is uh, also about our ability to reinforce and have a credible uh, deterrence, and that's exactly what NATO is about, and that will be also demonstrated uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Vilnius. Um, uh, then on the, on the Wagner forces, well, I think it's too early to draw the, any final conclusion, so uh, what kind of uh, consequences that will have. Uh, the mutiny, the events we saw, uh, are uh, internal uh, Russian matters. Um, then uh, uh, maybe some of, or we are mon following and monitoring what's going on very closely. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, some of these uh, forces may be uh, deployed to, uh, to, to Belarus. But again, I think it's too early to draw an, or, uh, any final con uh, conclusions. The most important thing is that uh, we are sending a very clear message to any potential adversary, including Moscow and Minsk, that we are there to, to protect and defend uh, every inch of Allied territory against any threat. So uh, we have increased our presence. We will uh, uh, further strengthen our deterrence and defense at the Vilnius summit, and then we'll continue to monitor exactly what happens with the Wagner forces. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, um, the, as, I, as it was uh, addressed for me as well, uh, the defense plans, uh, I think they're, they're good. We also need to make work in, in, in practice, and that, that is what we are doing, uh, that the combat readiness of the troops is, is really not a word on the paper, but actually in real life. And that actually requires the defense investments of all, all the allies to increase as well, uh, to uh, be uh, ready uh, to fulfill the uh, the uh, warehouses uh, uh, regarding ammunition, the uh, equipment uh, necessary, um, but I'm. Uh, I'm also, uh, uh, I agree uh, what was said that uh, Alliance is ready to defend every inch of its uh, territory. What comes to Belarus, we have considered Belarus as a go-aggressor in this uh, war. So uh, nothing has changed in this regard. We know that uh, Belarus, as Russia, is unpredictable and it's dangerous. And uh, this hasn't changed. So uh, clearly our stance, uh, our forward defense uh, stance hasn't changed in this regard as well. I think uh, uh, we are also uh, ready for, for any uh, development. Delphi. Delphi, I guess please first. Thank you. Hello, Herman Gelom is from Delphi in Estonia. Question to both of you, to both of you about the pathway to membership uh, for Ukraine. I've been speaking to some officials and it seems that rather than getting a pathway to membership in Vilnius, uh, Ukraine will get a promise of a pathway and that this will be decided upon later in Washington. So what is the most positive scenario that is realistic for Ukraine in Vilnius, and what would an actual pathway look like? 
Uh, well, so first of all, I think it's too early uh, to um, pre-announce uh, uh, the outcome of the Vilnius Summit. Uh, there are ongoing consultations, as there always will be when we have important decisions uh, to make. Uh, but I'm absolutely confident uh, that uh, at the Vilnius Summit, allies will uh, find common ground also on how to address Ukraine's membership uh, aspirations. And we have to remember that allies actually agree uh, on uh, very more, many important uh, messages and, and, uh, and positions regarding uh, Ukraine and membership of uh, NATO. We all agree that NATO's door is open. We have demonstrated that uh, recently by inviting Finland and, uh, and Sweden. We all agree that uh, Ukraine will become a member of this alliance. And, uh, and we all agree that uh, uh, it's for the NATO allies and, and, and Ukraine to decide when the time is right to invite Ukraine to be a, a member of the alliance. But perhaps the most important thing we agree on is that, uh, is that uh, the most urgent task now is to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation in Europe. Because uh, if President Putin wins this war, then there is no more membership issue to be discussed at all. Uh, so the, the main focus should be how to ensure that Ukraine uh, prevails. Uh, and, th and that's the precondition for any meaningful discussion about uh, further uh, membership. Mm -hmm. Let me add one more thing. We are going to strengthen our pol practical support, uh, which will bring uh, uh, Ukraine closer to NATO, uh, a multi-year program for uh, making Ukraine fully interoperable uh, with NATO forces uh, is an important step. And we're also discussing how to further strengthen the political ties, uh, including by uh, uh, potentially agreeing a NATO-Ukraine uh, Council. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have uh, not much to add. Uh, we have to work on the wording uh, so that every, everybody is on board and the worries that some allies have uh, regarding uh, further steps and, and also uh, the hope that we should give uh, to Ukrainians as I'm really confident that uh, any grey zone uh, in, in Europe is a source of conflict and war and actually the only security guarantee that really works is NATO and I can tell this uh, by uh, my own country's history. The reason uh, we are not living through some really dark times right now is because we are in NATO uh, and that is important. And that is also important uh, for, uh, for the prosperity of uh, European uh, uh, continent because uh, if uh, you don't have wars, uh, you have investments, you have economic security, so it is in our interest uh, that we find this uh, pathway. But, uh, but the wording is still uh, being working out and don't want to uh, somehow spoil the surprise of, of the Vilnius Summit. Last but not least, Deutsche Welle. <laughs> Javeli, thank you. Um, I wanted to drill down on, on um, my colleague's question on military mobility. Uh, Prime Minister Kallas, you said famously almost exactly a year ago that you feared the Baltic states could be overrun and that it would take NATO 180 days to kick out whoever's forces who might be overrunning you. Are you convinced that military mobility has moved forward now? Not just that you have stockpiles somewhere else, but that you could get them to a crisis spot fast enough. Um, it, it, uh, those are part of the regional plans. Um, and Secretary General Stoltenberg, are you disappointed that at the budgeting that the EU has given this project? It was slashed to practically nothing. It was going to be a big flag, flagship cooperation project for NATO and the EU. And do you think you could get the forces there fast enough. Has Turkey agreed to these regional plans now so that m mobility, thank you, my colleagues are nodding, so we all want the ans these answers. Um, is military mobility really going to take a big step at Vilnius? Mm. Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, this is a big issue. First of all, uh, we have moved from the deterrence posture to defence posture, which means that uh, we are uh, not in in a way of uh, uh, you know uh, conquering the territories back or liberating the territories afterwards, but we are uh, ready to defend the territories from the first minute uh, and the first centimetre. Uh, what, uh, of course, there's room for. Um, uh, uh, some development regarding the military mobility, but uh, what I want to stress now is that we have Finland in NATO. That uh, changes the whole picture because uh, because of the military mobility, not only making us as a peninsula in terms of uh, NATO, but actually uh, being uh, in the middle. Uh, so so uh, the help could c come from from different uh, ways. So so I'm I'm pretty sure that we have uh, moved uh, from. Uh, 
the situation where we were a year ago by the good decisions that we made in Madrid and also the execution of those uh, plans and, and now uh, going further uh, with, uh, uh, with those plans um, as well. So, uh, of course, uh, there is room for uh, development. We have to do more, but uh, it is still much better, uh, the situation. NATO has, uh, over the last years, uh, since 2014, um, implemented the biggest reinforcements of collective defence in the generation. An important part of that has been uh, and continues to be military mobility. Uh, because uh, uh, to be able to reinforce quickly is a critical part of uh, the way we are providing deterrence and the way we can reinforce and, uh, and, uh, and uh, deter any aggression against uh, any NATO uh, ally. So what has happened over the last years is really a, a significant loss improvement of military mobility. There has been huge investments in infrastructure, in military uh, transport and logistic capacity, uh, more pre-positioned uh, supplies and, uh, and, uh, and equipment. Uh, and uh, and uh, also, of course, uh, we are working very closely with the European Union. Uh, I will meet, uh, actually, the European Union. I will be in the European Council tomorrow, uh, together with Kaya and all the other uh, EU leaders. And military mobility has been part of this cooperation. But this is not only dependent on the budgets of the European Union. This is very much financed by uh, the national budgets uh, for investments in, uh, in military capabilities to ensure uh, mobility, but also in civilian uh, infrastructure, which is important to ensure military mobility. Then, this is something we not only do in words, but also in deeds. We have the battle groups. Uh, we are actually now exercising uh, the ability to scale them quickly uh, up to brigade size levels. I returned from Estonia this week, where we had a big exercise uh, demonstrating exactly that. We had earlier uh, exercise in Estonia to scale up the, the British uh, battle group. And an important part of that is to exercise and demonstrate military mobility to get these forces quickly in uh, to uh, the territories, the countries uh, we want them to be. Um, uh, then I totally agree with um, uh, Prime Minister Carlos that the fact that Finland is now a full-fledged member of the alliance also changes the whole security uh, geography in uh, the Baltic Sea uh, region. Uh, because if you look at the map, that has uh, profound consequences for our ability to reinforce, move forces uh, quickly into the Baltic region. And soon Sweden also will be a member that will further strengthen our ability and, to, and, and make it easier to move and to reinforce uh, forces if, uh, if needed. We'll continue to work with the European Union, but again, the, the, the main task of NATO is not to, re, uh, to liberate land. The main task of NATO is to prevent any attack on any NATO ally. And, that, and this is deterrence, and it has worked for almost 75 years. We were able to deter aggression against West Berlin. We didn't have any forces in West Berlin, in the middle of East Germany, but deterrence was credible. Uh, I'm coming from a country, Norway, uh, the northern part of Norway didn't have any uh, so NATO troops uh, at all, but the border with Russia, deterrence worked. So this is part about forward presence, but it's also about uh, exercising, demonstrating uh, the ability to reinforce in a credible way to prevent any attack at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we will agree the regional plans, I'm absolutely certain. <laughs> Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference.